we're here with uh, Edouard Merckx uh, from JP Merckx. Thank you very much indeed for your time today and joining us. Thank you. Um, wonder if we could begin with just a little bit about your background and what the company does. Of course. Um, so we are a family company. We're a very new company to Bordeaux since uh, I'm only the third generation. Uh, it was started by my grandfather, Jean-Pierre Merckx, uh, in 1937. And uh, he moved from Corrèze, which is a very poor part of... Uh, of, uh, of France with his parents in 1929, with the famous crisis of 1929, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and they bought Chateau Fonroc, which is a Grand Cru Classic of saint Emilio. And my grandfather very quickly started his negos business because the negotiants at the time were controlling the, the distribution and uh, the, the quality of the wines because they were bottling the wines themselves um, in 1937, as I said before. So since, uh, uh, since the beginning, we have developed three branches within the, the, the business. Obviously the vineyards um, concentrating on Pomerol and saint Emilion. Um, we had quite a few properties and then my father shrank the number of properties uh, to just the, the, the essential uh, uh, quality wise. Um, so we have nine properties in Pomerol today and two in saint Emilion, two, two premier Grand Cru Classé. Uh, then the other part which is the typical wine merchant business as many other wine merchants where we buy wines that we don't produce and we sell them, we distribute them. Uh, sometimes it's on exclusive basis, sometimes it's just on, on, on allocation. And the third uh, element, which is in a sense the most important part of, of the business, is what we can call the private label, where we purchase after the malolactic uh, uh, vinification, uh, fermentation, sorry, um, we purchase a large number of tanks uh, uh, from different properties, uh, um, wines that we feel are of good quality and are representative of the style of Bordeaux. The style of Bordeaux being fresh, elegant, well-balanced with a nice red fruit. Um, we are not interested in the Bordeaux which have been vinified with, uh, with too much oak, with what a tour which is called oak ships nowadays um, which unfortunately will will bring aromas to the wine without bringing the 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 actual positive elements of of, of aging in barrels um, and and uh, and therefore will travestite the, the 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 style of the wines um, we uh, we are interesting in the in the identity of what you call in england a bordeaux claret uh, which will then make people drink on a daily basis a good glass of wine uh, just to be accompanied by a good friend more than uh, to be overwhelmed by somebody who wants to show muscles only. Fantastic. And I mean, among those bottlings that you describe is uh, the Society saint Emilion, for example. Of course. And um, the Society's been working with you for, for some time now. For many years. Many years um, now, yes. I also wanted to ask you about the major work that you've been doing at uh, Chateau Bel Air or Chateau Bel Air Monange, as it's now known. Exactly. Um, you purchased it in 2008? 2008. We, uh, we s the final signature with, uh, was early September 2008. Um, we got to follow the vineyard during the summer, which is important, uh, but we didn't get to really prune the vineyard, which is the crucial point for us. So, uh, 08, uh, um, we consider it as the first vintage of Belair Monange, Monange being the name of my great grandmother, the maiden name. Um, but we, our first real fully controlled vintage was 2009. Um, Be Belair Monange is uh, is a property which has great qualities. It's the highest point of the the, the famous limestone uh, uh, plateau terrace of Saint Emilion. Uh, plus it has some fantastic uh, uh, clay slope facing south so the, 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 the slope, uh, uh, the slopey part of the vineyard which is about five hectares will bring the depth and the concentration in the wine where the, the elegancy and the minerality will come from the plateau um, but it has one uh, uh, big uh, problem which, which we can fix, thank God um, is uh, the, the choirs uh, uh, of Saint Emilion, which have been used to build Libourg, to build Saint Emilion, to build part of, of Bordeaux, um, have been intensely uh, uh, used, and it's a, it's a real, as you say in English, Swiss cheese. Um, and so, what we are doing, we have identified since we purchased the vineyard, the parts of the vineyard that are uh, more fragile than other. 
um, and we are recreating large spiders. Uh, so we're not changing the terroir because we're not filling up the space. There's mm -hmm. too much space anyway to, fill, to be filled up. But uh, we we uh, we are uh, sort of creating a belt uh, around the, the fragile parts. Sometimes it's a belt of eight meters. Sometimes it's a belt of 30 meters, and we are filling up uh, uh, just to create a, 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 a piler um, and to make sure that that plateau will not collapse. It sounds like a very, very large project. It's a large project. It's a little too large for us, but it's not larger than our passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's, it will not stop us believe that Bel Air is one of the greatest terroir of saint emilion We have the proof, historic, uh, historical proof. Um, we went back to England, actually, uh, to George uh, Knowles, uh, who was the, the Grand Sénéchal of, of Guyenne, and under, uh, we would say, as a French-English occupation. <laughs> um, and, um, and, uh, and since then, uh, it, it remained within the same family until 1916, when it was bought by Monsieur Dubois Chalon. And after Monsieur Dubois Chalon, it was us. So it's a very long history. It's a very long history of quality, of recognized quality since in 1855. It was uh, proposed as a first growth uh, by the merchants, but it was too far away. That's why uh, first growth of uh, left bank, of <laughs> course, it was too far away. Uh, uh, so that's why it was not uh, uh, included in the classement. But it, it gives an idea of, of the recognition of the wine at the time. And we will fight to bring that recognition back. And uh, yes, we all look forward to the future vintages that, uh, that are yet to come. Um, Thank you. And just before we let you go, I just wanted to ask um, your passion for wine and for Bordeaux wine in particular is patently obvious and will be to anyone watching from the last few minutes. Uh, your family's passion for art as well has also yes. been very well documented. I wanted to know what your passions were outside wine. What do you enjoy doing? Well, I've, as you, you mentioned, art um, and uh, uh, my, my grandfather being a, a very intense person has managed to pass on both his passions to the, the following generations. Uh, and my father has done so, so I'm uh, I'm very much interested in art. Um, I'm more a follower than a collector. Maybe one day I'll be able to collect, uh, hopefully. Um, but uh, but uh, apart from that, it's it's more the, the lifestyle that goes with with all of that. Um, we are very very fortunate to uh, to be in a business, and it's, it, as a family business, it's part of our of our life. Um, that allows us to travel tremendously, to meet great people with completely different backgrounds, which have done amazing things in their life or not. Uh, but all these people have one passion in 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 common: it's it's wine, and 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 we we really love that. So we sort of share the same passion of of, of our customers and friends. Um, and you know, it's it's the the the, str the strongest passion is clearly art. Uh, I can talk about cars like every boy or, uh, around Earth, but uh, but but the real passion, the, the real other passion is art. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.